Hi, this is Yemi Akimto. I'm the pastor of Good Life Church here in the United States. And uh, I'd like to speak a little bit about what is going on around us right now, particularly on the rumors and the misinformation and the level of ignorance that a lot of people have, you know, um, demonstrated, you know, uh, particularly those who you, you'll expect to speak God's word purely and specifically to the situations and events that, that are happening right now and who seem to be under pressure or just speaking from the point of misinformation, uh, particularly concerning the end times. A lot of people have been pushing out all kinds of information uh, about the 5G network, about the cause of uh, COVID-19, uh, the fact that, oh, it's because some cables were being laid, some masks were being installed all around the world. And so right now, what COVID-19 is all about is about coming up with a vaccine that when they put it in our bodies, uh, in this guise of trying to treat the virus, they ultimately give us the number of the beast. Now, that is nonsense. And largely because God's word doesn't say that. You see, what you must understand is that the situations about the end times, the prophecies concerning the end times, have to do with unfolding of events. Something must happen before another thing happens. Then another thing will happen. Then another thing will happen. And the Bible always says that if you have eyes to see and you have ears to hear, that day shouldn't shock you. And I like to share a few scriptures with us and a few uh, facts from God's word. I'm not going to be speaking for myself. I'm going to be speaking, speaking purely from God's word. If you look at Second Thessalonians, uh, chapter number two, the book of Second Thessalonians in the New Testament, Paul was writing to the church in Thessalonians, and he said in verse one, I'm going to read from verse one to four. He said, "Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him, we ask you." not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as see from us, as though the day of the Lord had come. Verse 3 says, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed. And the son of perdition who, ex who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, all that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Did you see that? Paul said in verse 3, said, let no man deceive you, that that day will not come, First and foremost, there must be a falling away. Okay? I understand that when people, human beings, our minds, the way it works, is that when we are, we can't explain something. We tend to attach rumors to it. We tend to attach all kinds of things to it. You know, drawing on conclusions that are not right. Misleading people. Alright? Uh, and Paul was trying to tell people here that in Thessalonians, he said, "Don't he said the things that were happening around us necessarily did not mean that the day had come." And Paul has, was saying that certain events must take place, and that's what I want to focus on this this, this morning. Even as I try to enlighten us a little bit about these events, now COVID nineteen is not a spiritual issue. Okay, it's not a spiritual a spiritual issue. It's not from God. God is not angry with the world. And this is not God sending pestilence. So let's clear that. This is not God causing a pandemic to kill everybody. No. That's not how God works. There's a place in, in the book of Revelations where the fourth angel will, will, will open the veil and there will be death to the 25, up to the 25% of global population. We are far from that. Even the Spanish flu of 1918 didn't kill up to 2% of the world population. It killed just about 1%. The Bible says at some point, about 20% of the world population will die. Then you know that is from God, but that we are far from there now. So where are we actually? This COVID-19 is not a spiritual weapon. Now, 
the, I'm not a scientist and I'm not a technologist, but I think I'm uh, smart enough to know that the way it operates, it operates more like a biological thing because it attacks the lungs, it attacks your internal body. So whatever it came from, is a creation of something. And in, in, in few days or few months from now, the world will know what really happened. So don't let anybody make you become afraid or fearful. Okay, let's go to God's word. And, and, and be assured of what God is saying so that we are not caught unawares or we are not being tossed to and fro by people's misinformation and funny doctrines. The 5G network is what we need in the world right now because a lot of things are going to be taking place. Artificial intelligence is being put together in different parts of the world and they need to, to you know, get a faster broadband, faster than the 4G. The world has seen 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, we are now in 4G, so they are moving to the fifth one. Okay, and it's just to have to make help us have a future of convenience. All right, policing the police, you know, work will be easier through 5G. You and I will have better life because of 5G. Okay, because it has a faster broadband. The things that takes you about maybe one minute, ten minutes, one hour to download. Now you download them in seconds. It's just an upgrade, an upgrade to 4G, an improvement over 4G. It's not something that's going to kill anybody. Hallelujah. All right. So, there are countries with smart cities. Dubai has been to Dubai a million times. Dubai has smart cities. Singapore has smart cities. There are a lot of smart cities all over the world. And they need 5G to operate. A lot of things are going to be happening. That if the 5G is not established, a lot of things can't happen. You know, the world needs to move faster. We're going to see 6G. We're going to see 7G. We're going to see 10G. So if you think that the world is going to collapse because of 5G, you're wrong. That is not what God's word says. Let's go back to God's word. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. It says, let no man deceive you by any means, either by social media or by, by doomsday prophecy, pro prophets or by some political party. It says that day will not come except there is a falling away first. What is that falling away? That falling away is when the church begins to experience a massive deadness of spirit. I mean, our, you can see a lot of many Christians are waxing cold. You know, that's going to continue to happen. More and more people will be turned from God. They are going to love themselves more than they love God. Some will cross God. Some will hate God. Some will hate the things that, are, that, that have to do with God. There's going to be a massive falling away. The church, you know, as it were, will get colder and colder and weaker and weaker. Priorities misplaced, as you can see in some quarters. All right? And, and then that's when you begin to be afraid. Those are the prelude to the coming of, the, of that man of sin, like Paul said. Okay, and the Bible says in verse 4 that it's going to oppose and exalt himself above everything that represents God. It's going to fight the church very ferociously. It's going to be a spiritual, you know, a religious and a political person. Because if you look at the book of uh, Revelation chapter, chapter 12, let, let's look at Revelation chapter 12. You know, I need us to understand this thing so that we are not, we are not uh, caught unawares. Let's look at chapter 13. Chapter 13 says, from verse 1, said, And I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea. This is the, this is the reporting of, of, of John, one of the disciples of Christ, from the highland of Patmos. You know, he said, He saw a beast rising out of the sea. It says, That beast has seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his head a blasphemous name. Now, you're not going to see a literal beast. What Bible is saying is that a government is going to emerge or a group of governments. When you hear heads in the Bible, it's symbolic of governments. So we're going to have a group of governments. They're going to be a new world order. They're going to come together. They will all have the same religious philosophy. They're all going to go to the same financial philosophy. They're all going to have the same social direction, you know, political agenda. So these guys are going to come together. Right now, we don't have that kind of thing. Okay? Nations of the world are still tussling for mastery, for for superiority but the time will come that every you look as if the, the the top powerful nations of the world are all thinking the same thing making their people behave the same way 
those are the things that we're going to begin to see okay so so when paul was talking about it paul is saying that when you begin to see a massive falling away of the church when people who are supposed to call on the name of the lord have their priorities twisted when pastors abandon the things of god and they go after you know things that don't glorify god when you see a massive rush into things that do not really represent or glorify god happening in the body of christ then you begin to know that there's a big problem coming 5G has no resemblance of that. 5G is just a technology. It's not, 5G is not the virus. You know, people are saying that don't even take the vaccine because that's where the virus is. They've not even found the vaccine. And people are already saying that that's where the virus is. So if we are waiting for the vaccine where the virus is, so what is killing people right now? Is it the junior brother of the virus? You know, I'm trying to understand it. And when you ask, you know, when you ask common sensical questions, you know, you see that these things, these people don't know what they're saying. They don't even know God's word. So let's move on. Now, let me talk a little bit about the mark of the beast. You know, I've told you that governments of the world will come together. And they, all, they will have the same religious, political, social, uh, polit you know, agenda, financial agenda. They will come together. That beast will come. It's a government. Okay? So the man of sin who will be revealed will come out of one of those governments. And the entire government will rally around him. It's going to be a man that is of immense spiritual power because the Bible says he's going to have do a lot of miracles. And it's going to be a man of immense political power because almost all the nations of the world will follow whatever he says. So ultimately, the battle is a spiritual battle. It's not a technology battle. That's where the world is going. It's going to be... It's spiritual battle. That's where we are going. Okay? So, that mark of the beast can only happen after the man of sin has been revealed. Don't forget that. There will be no mark until the beast or the man of sin or the antichrist is revealed. So, the mark won't come before the beast. And I will explain what the mark means. Simple. So, just follow me. When this man becomes very politically powerful, spiritually powerful, it will go to Israel or anywhere you have the temple of God and I believe it's going to be in Israel and it's going to sit in the Holy of Holies and it will command that they worship him. Everything that the ancient Israel, you know, did, you know, and some part of Israel are still doing, slaughtering of rams, cutting of bulls, doing all of that, everything they were doing to honor the God of heaven, the guy would demand that they honor, they honor him and they cut the bulls onto him. You saw what Second Thessalonians says. So this guy is going to control the government of the world. He's going to control the political, the spiritual, the spiritual, the social agenda of the world. Things are going to change. The nations of the world are going to start thinking alike. At that time, you won't see democracy somewhere. You won't see communism somewhere. You won't see socialism somewhere. Every government of the world or, or, or the major governments of the world that control every other government of the world will all be thinking alike. So, these are the sequences of events. First and foremost, there will be a massive following. You know, a lot of Christians, their, 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 their desire for God, their, thing, their desire for the things of God will grow cold. And you see a lot of churches, you know, just doing whatever they like. There will be all kinds of priorities that will come into the body of Christ that shouldn't be. Things that don't glorify God. Things that just glorify the flesh. And you see them happening in a, on a massive scale. And you've, you've seen bits, bits, bits and pieces of that all over the world. But what the scripture is saying is that it's going to happen on, a, on an M, you know, M mass. It's going to be large. It's going to be broad. It's going to be massive. And we are yet to see that. Then at the end of the day, the man of sin will be revealed, the beast. Then he will control the government of the world. Then the, the, the mark will, will happen. Let me tell you a little bit about the, 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 the mark of the Antichrist. The Bible calls it the mark of a man. What it simply means... You know, in Revelation, let me show you where it says that let no one be deceived. That is going to be the mark of a man. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. He said, here is wisdom. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. He said, here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Man was created on the sixth day. The number six is the number of man. So what is this guy saying? This guy is going to the Antichrist. After being in control of government, 
after being in control of churches, so to say, the churches that will be around after rapture has taken place, after being in control of the financial transactions and everything and, and trade and everything all over the world, is going to provide an access code for everyone who wants to participate in that new world order. That's what the 666 means. It's just an access code. So whether they're going to put it on the forehead or on the right hand like the Bible says, or put it under the skin or anywhere they want to put it, it is an access code to a new world order. You will not be able to buy. You will not be able to sell. You will really not be able to survive in this life without it. Because everybody is tied together. And it's difficult to live. You know, if you don't observe that. If you don't, you don't take that number. So, the question I want to ask us, or we should be asking ourselves is this. What is the primary aim of the Antichrist? And now, has the Bible, we we'll have to use the Bible to, to explain it. Let me look at, let's look at uh, Genesis chapter, chapter 13. Let's go back to Genesis, uh, sorry, Revelation 13 verse 8. Revelation 13 8. There's a lot to learn in Revelation 13 and 14. You can read them on your own. Read those, those chapters on your own. Revelation 13 verse 8 says, and all, no, verse 7, let me go to verse 7. And you'll be a bit scared when you read verse 7. It says, power was granted to him to make war with the saints. And to overcome them. And authority was given to him over every tribe, over every tongue, and over every nation. I told you earlier, the Antichrist, that man of sin, is going to exalt himself like God. And is going to demand worship. The Bible said he has power. He's, he's going to be given power over every tongue, over every tribe, over every nation. All nations of the world will be a central figure. Verse seven, verse 7 says he's going to have power to, to deal with the saints. What, what does that mean? That means that because of the coldness or the deadness of the body of Christ, we, as soon as that guy comes in power, he's going to persecute the body of Christ. He's going to persecute the church. But guess what? It will overcome. It means that if he tells us no more church service in some countries, it's not going to happen. If he tells us don't preach the name of the Lord Jesus Christ again, it's not going to happen. If he tells us don't carry the Bible anymore, it's not going to happen. But guess what? When that happens, the next thing that is most that we need to know that is most instructive is in verse 8. I believe between verse 7 and verse 8, rapture will have taken place. Jesus will have come and taken us home. Then this is verse 8, which is very important. Revelation 13, verse 8. It says, All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundations of the world. By that time, Christians will have left. The genuine ones who have, whose names have been written in the book of life, they are gone. And then he's going to compel everybody to worship him. Everybody to worship him. So, I asked us earlier, I said, what is the primary goal of the Antichrist? It's a spiritual goal. Financial transactions, trade, and all of that are secondary goals. Those are distant goals. His primary goal is to take the place of Jesus in the world is to replace God in the hearts of people. Is to replace God in our schools. Is to replace God in our daily life. The consciousness of God. Is to, he wants to entirely remove it. As we saw in, in 2 Thessalonians chapter, chapter 2. Now, in, in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, you can read from verse 1, but if you run down to verse 9, an angel, the Bible says, Then the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast, which is the Antichrist, and his image, and receives the mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength to the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So the angel is saying that God is telling us that the primary purpose of the Antichrist is worship. Global worship. Global worship. Every nation, every tongue, every race will be compelled to surrender to him and to worship him. God in himself, the entire reason why God sent Jesus. The Bible said the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and Christ and it shall reign forever. The entire primary reason for God to send Jesus is to be able to gather every tribe, every nation, every race to himself into worshiping. And this is exactly what the Antichrist is coming to replicate. 
This is what he's coming to replace and make himself God as sent to the temple and demand worship. So his primary goal is worship. Now, once everybody is worshiping him, all of a sudden he says, now because you are now my, 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 my subjects, because I run everything now, I'm going to give everybody an access code. You cannot eat, you cannot do anything without those code. It's 666. You cannot trade, you cannot buy, you cannot eat, you cannot do anything, you cannot sell. You can't live, literally, without that number. So don't forget about the sequence of events. They will be falling away. The government of the world will come together. They will all collapse their power, spiritual power, religious power, democratic power, all kinds of political power in one person. The guy is going to demand worship in the temple. He's going to call himself God. He will do all kinds of miracles that a lot of people will be deceived and swept off their feet. He will wage war against Christians, the real ones. The rapture takes place. Immediately after rapture takes place, it demands worship from every human being on the earth. And once everybody begins to worship him, guess what? He introduces the number and says that this is now, that number is a representation of absolute surrender to him. It's not, it's not really about buying and selling. It's about worship. Once you have that number, because I kept asking the Holy Spirit, you said if anybody takes that number, that you, they are irredeemable. Their souls are irredeemable. Even if they confess the Lord Jesus at that time. Because some people will be left behind after rapture. And all of a sudden it will dawn on them that, ah, they've been telling me this thing. So this thing is true. All of a sudden I can't find my wife again. I can't find my children again. I can't find my colleagues again. Some people have gone. Rapture has taken place. Now, if those people who are left behind takes that number, if they take that number, the Bible says they are irredeemable. So I asked the Holy Spirit, what has a number got to do with someone's soul? It's, the Holy Spirit told me it's not, about the, it's, not, it's not about the number. That number is a representation of your acceptance to worship somebody who is not God. Do you get it now? It's you agreeing that my taking this number, you know, when you buy a product or when you subscribe to a service, you see terms and conditions. If you click this thing, you are bound by these terms and conditions. That's what that number means. Once you accept this number, you are bound by these terms and conditions. And those are the terms and conditions of, of the government of that day. Do you understand what that means? So, that is what it happens. That's what it is. The beast, the antichrist, the man of sin will be operational. He will have done one or two things before he introduces the number. So anybody that is saying that, oh, the 5G, they'll put it in your body, and then when you put, put it in your body, it's a number, doesn't know what he's saying. Probably he's ignorant of the Bible. Amen? He's ignorant of the Bible. So this is purely a simple sequence of events. And as much as possible, let's not kid ourselves, the world is running towards that time. Towards that massive, you know, falling away of the church. As we saw in Thess Second Thessalonians, the entire structure of religious, political, religious worship will be changed. The guy goes into the temple, calls himself God, performs miracles. That means if a pastor raises up the dead, the guy will raise up the dead. The guy will even command signs to happen in heaven. You can tell the sun to, you know, to darken and the moon not to shine and it will happen. The whole world will be swept away. Amen. So, he will sit in the temple. He will command government. He will run the affairs of men. Hallelujah. He will command, he will control trade. He will command, control finance. He will literally control every form of things. You know, people are saying, oh, this 5G, facial recognition, Oh, they will, they, 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 will, they, will, they will know what you are talking about. They will know what you are doing. They will know this. They will know that. Those things are being exaggerated. There are nations of the world that if you land in their airports, they take your face. They scan your eyes as an ID. Some of you know what I'm talking about. There are nations, there are organizations that don't even need to carry a password. Your fingerprint alone will work. Somebody was saying in the other, or the other I, I listened to a note recently, the guy said, even in Wuhan, some part of Wuhan, where they said the virus came out from, some part are already a smart city. You don't even need any cash. You don't even need to carry a credit card, a credit card to make payment. Through your phone, you can make payment. 
So stop exaggerating things you cannot, you know, that, that are inevitable. These things will happen. They have no nothing to do with the Antichrist. When the Antichrist comes and they demand that, you know, they're not going to be, they're not going to be shy about it. They won't try to hide it. That's okay. Like somebody said, oh, when you sit down at home, they are now installing 5G. Those are nonsense. When that new world order comes, they are not going to be nice about their request. They are not going to be apologetic. They are not going to hide. They are not going to be politically correct in their request. They will demand that every living soul on the planet worship the Antichrist. They will demand that if you want to live, you must not just worship, you must accept the number as a global citizen, as a worshiper of the Antichrist. So all of those things are not happening. All right? All of those things are not happening. So, ladies and gentlemen, please understand that we are far from what they said is going to happen. <laughs> we are far from it. Hallelujah. The Bible said as soon as they start worshipping the, the Antichrist, as soon as they start worshipping the Antichrist, Revelations chapter 14 verse 9, verse, verse 9 and 10, it says then God will now pour his fury. The anger of God, 100%. The Bible calls it full will be poured, poured on the earth. Then, you know, all kinds of imaginable things will start to happen. All kinds of imaginable things will start. If you read down, you will see how Jesus now tapped an angel and said, get your sickle, it's time for harvest. So, all kinds of events will start unfolding after that. After God has poured his entire, every fury that God has, every rot that God has, in all his power, will be poured on the earth. And it's going to be total chaos, total calamity. We've not seen anything. And we will not be here by the time that is happening. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we will have been raptured because our names are written in the book of life. So when that happens, then the end will come. Hallelujah. Rapture first, then the end of everything will come. Because all of a sudden, the Bible says, Jesus will just show up in his glory. And that's it. He will reclaim the nations of the earth. He will defeat the Antichrist. He will bind him and cast him into, into darkness for, him, for, for a very long time. And he will reclaim the ownership of the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. Did you get that this morning? So, please understand this. The sequences are clear. The events are clear. The direction that God has given us in the scriptures are clear. 5G network is to better our life. We are already on 4G. 5G is an improvement of, on 4. We are still going to see 6G. We are still going to see 7G. We will see 10G. Amen. If the Lord tarries. Because some technology cannot work. Artificial intelligence is coming. There's nothing we can do about it. Robots are going to replace a lot of, a lot of people. And they're going to do the, some of the work we're doing right now as humans. They need 5G to, to perfect those things. It, to police, it will be difficult to even commit a crime. Because once they scan your face, they'll pick you anywhere in the world. So there are benefits to these things. You know, and because we still have some democratic principles, some democratic countries, you know, this, this full surveillance of our private lives, you know, trust that some courts will, 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 will reject it. Some countries will not just fall blindly behind it. All right? So that's it. It will not just happen like that overnight. Everybody wakes up and then 5G is everywhere, and then Antichrist is everywhere, and then there is, and then everybody has a number because we've taken the vaccine. There is no virus in the vaccine. There is no number in the vaccine. Amen. So I just felt like I should let us know that if you have any questions, please you can go to my, my Instagram and just DM me with your questions. It's py underscore nuggets. py underscore nuggets. Nuggets is plural. Just go to my site, to my Instagram page, and just DM me your questions. And I'll be glad to answer it. So please be informed, be guided, stop being afraid. And the Lord is your strength throughout these uncertain times. God bless you. I'll see you again.